Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the newest album from Frank Turner called Be More Kind. You know, at this point, I really don't have much of an idea what to expect from Frank Turner Records anymore. Okay, not quite true, but from his original departure from post-hardcore towards indie folk and indie rock, and given that I didn't hear any of his singles from this record going into it, I really didn't have that many expectations where this was gonna go. Now, granted, there is a certain earnest sonic palette in his music that is pretty familiar by this point. Surging guitars, big hooks, generally in the realms of indie folk rock, but beyond that, within that sonic palette, there were only shades of a recognizable formula. So even while I consider Love Iron Song his best work, and one of the best records of the 2000s for the record, it's not even that far removed from his last album, Positive Songs from Negative People in 2015, which is arguably his biggest play for mainstream adjacent attention courtesy production from Butch Walker, and even rumors of a Taylor Swift collaboration that didn't really materialize. And given what has happened to her career in the past couple years, we'd probably retrospectively consider that a blessing. But there is a part of me that kind of wishes maybe some of Frank Turner could have rubbed off on her. That could have been really cool for her career. Certainly would have been better than Reputation. But instead, I started hearing some weird things about this release outside of what you would expect from Frank Turner. Influences spanning from Gang of Four and Wired to mid-period records from The Cure. Maybe even a pivot towards more 80s pop. And that would unquestionably be a big departure for him. And this has led to some of the more polarized reviews I've seen surrounding Be More Kind. Especially when you hear that there's a pretty stark political element to it. Now here's the thing, Frank Turner's political work has always been somewhat complicated. Go back to the title track of Love Iron Song and you realize that he's never been some sort of hardline punk or leftist. There's always been nuance there. And while my own tendencies have pushed me more leftwards in that direction, I am up for the nuanced, difficult conversation, especially when you remember that Frank Turner is not American and even if a stylistic departure like this could wind up being an outlier for him long term, it could lead to a really interesting conversation. So okay, what do we get on Be More Kind? Oh boy. Well, credit to Frank Turner. When I said I was ready for a nuanced and difficult conversation with this album, I certainly got it. Because I completely get why Be More Kind will be a very tough record for a lot of fans to swallow. Especially when you start digging into a lot of the content, because there's more here than you think. So yeah, warning in advance, this review will likely get pretty political and loaded there. So if you're looking for the cliff notes, whether or not the music is great enough to pull it over the top, well, not quite. And that's also one of the reasons this conversation is bound to get a fair bit messier than I would otherwise prefer. You know what, in fact, let's start with the music, and with the first change that I'm actually pretty okay with, ditching Butch Walker for three indie producers who are aiming to cultivate a smaller, more restrained, almost delicate palette on some songs. The textures, they are thinner and cleaner, the guitars feel a little bit more brittle, the bass grooves are more wiry and jagged, I see why you're seeing a little bit more of the wire influence there, and the percussion ranges from the sort of ragged, nervy punch that shows some real instability to some of the most programmed and electronic beats that Frank Turner has ever used. And even then, on songs like Common Ground against the choppy acoustic guitar and the bass, it almost sounds like the song's on the edge of constantly breaking down, almost remind me a little of The Nationals' last album. And if that sounds damn close to heresy for diehard fans, especially when you factor in the usage of more synthesizers instead of pianos, from the overblown warping tones behind Make America Great Again, a song that really feels way too stiff to be all that effective, especially with that in incredibly underwhelming key change, or you get the gentler swell behind There She Is, or the borderline quirky production elements you might hear in the adult alternative in the mid-2000s like on the chirpy Little Changes, or the buzzy cascade of synthesizers on Blackout, well yeah, all this is kind of heresy. And while I get the point of how Frank Turner's aiming for a deliberately smaller, softer, more inviting approach, if you're coming in expecting the huge anthems that have characterized nearly all of his albums, okay, you get a few, like 1933 and Brave Face and There She Is, but the more pronounced feeling that characterized Be More Kind is similar to that slightly dazed uncertainty that characterized a lot of Jeff Rosenstock's post, albeit with more Frank Turner's characteristic wistful earnestness and yearning that's always laid at the roots of some of his best songs. Now, of course, this means that he's leaning a lot more into his melodic singing style than his more aggressive style that I personally prefer a little more, but he's always had buckets of charisma and likability, and that bone-deep weariness balance against his sincerity makes songs like Don't Worry and Get It Right or the title track or even Going Nowhere have a lot of charm to them. Not although not always having a lot of distinctive instrumental texture or rootsy feeling which I would honestly prefer a little more. But again 
You can tell some of this was intentional because this record is not aiming to be a firebrand punk release. And yes, this is where the conversation is going to start to get political and where on the surface you could definitely see Frank Turner skidding into the sort of centrist territory that would raise a lot of eyebrows from the left side of his fan base. More about reaching across the aisle and listening and talking to those with whom that we will likely share more in common than we don't. And let me stress, this can be kind of dicey territory because it operates on three fundamental fundamental assumptions. One, that everybody's acting in good faith in this dialogue, and that's often proven not to be the case. Number two, one side is aware that it's being backed by the inertia of a larger system, which currently enforces inequalities of opportunity. And number three, that one side isn't fighting for active systemic disenfranchisement of the other side. And this to me is a sort of self-awareness and nuance that Let's be very honest, neither side can feel all that comfortable with, as the loudest, most extreme voices will further polarize the conversation. And I can see both sides being all the more reticent and suspicious to approach this because there have been actors in bad faith and naked trolling, substantially more given the current United States political administration with their blundering, antagonistic, anti-intellectual approach to policy, truth, and democratic government. So... For Frank Turner to imply that they'd be willing to come to the table and have a very mature conversation can feel pretty naive at best, and at worst enabling normalization of a lot of that behavior. Because let's get real, sunshine isn't always the disinfectant that we wish it could be. But here's the thing. Frank Turner knows all that as clearly as anybody, and what adds some real significant heft to the songwriting is the fact that he's ignoring the talking heads and the punditry, the extremists and the trolls, and specifically to speak to the grassroots audience, many of whom are scared, confused, angry at the other side for reasons I doubt they'd ever be able to come to credibly articulate, or they're just disengaged to focus on their own self-interest, because that's the only way you can really function in the constant screaming barrage of noise. And Frank Turner, he frames himself as being much like them and not having the full set of answers. And even as an artist, you should raise the question why you should be listening to him in the first place, because he doesn't have all the answers. Mending a cultural divide between left and right, that's a sort of exhausting seismic shift where any sort of effort there is Herculean. He wants to find the answers though, and he does have some suggestions, with one of the few moments of catharsis on this album that we get is 1933 and targeting both the new wave of Nazis and those who would seek to dismantle systems without any sort of real fix or plan long term and it's followed with songs like Little Changes implying that if you want to do anything better you need to start small at the local level not relying on thoughts and prayers but actually you know taking action and I can't stress enough that Frank Turner's optimism and his willingness to keep an open mind in conversation while trying to provide that bedrock of support gives the record a core of strength even despite feeling more bedraggled and haggard than ever you get the feeling he believes what he's selling and it's taking a toll on him. The pleas to not decide what you will find before you even start your search on the title track. The hope that the sentiment will survive on going nowhere. The clenched teeth and fists in the face of larger crises that come on brave face. Even the desperate hope that something can be found in the middle with an acknowledgement that the way we disagree might be more damaging than the disagreement itself on common ground. And a big part of all this is that Frank Turner, he's not mincing around that we will have big problems that will demand humanity's entire involvement in order to solve, like the more environmental side. Which is why songs like Brave Face, The Lifeboat, and 21st Century Survivalist Blues, they focus more on those larger underlying apocalyptic issues. Although I will say the last of these can feel more sanctimonious than it probably should, it's only really redeemed by the song Blackout coming right after it to highlight how little he himself is prepared for that survivalist situation. And you know what? There is a part of me, the yearning, earnest part of me, that really admires how much Frank Turner sees that possibility that both sides can come around common ground. They can find that spot. But it's really the track Make America Great Again that highlights both the potential and the gaping oversights in that approach. Because, yes, he's seen folks all across the United States that are willing to accept that nuance and promote some degree of tolerance, make racists ashamed again, and aspire to be better, reject those who would seek to rule without consequence or check, bring more people in who need help, and provide that help for them. But if there's a song that could have used a moment to target the bad actors exploiting the divide more directly, it's this one. I'm sorry, it just feels kind of slight. And it's a similar feeling I get when I hear Get It Right, that's so desperate to make something work, forgive mistakes, both 
his own and others take a breath land on the same set of facts when in reality there is entrenched misinformation mercenaries blindly accepting that they could have deserved more attention than maybe the shots at kids on their phones or in social media when really a lot of the kids are driving more of the change right now it just becomes hard to find common ground when then there is an industry set to nuking that common ground for orbit and incidentally that's one of the reasons why the love song there she is works on the record if only for the references of finding a partner who will actually believe you in the face of misinformation and gaslighting and that's one reason that despite what I had admire about this album, I almost feel like Frank Turner's in a no-win situation here. He brings his most inviting and approachable project to the table with the sort of balanced reason to appeal to everybody, but it might not have that raw firepower at its core to truly yoke together that union, or take enough shots at those who profit and promote naked ignorance or non-engagement trying to sabotage that process and keep people divided. I mean, he's certainly willing to take the steps for himself and for those willing to listen, it is a welcome step to get on board and try to broach and find some sort of compromise but with the music not quite being as strong and a fair few tracks just feeling a little scant on the greater details to flesh out the scene and story i'm giving it a 7 out of 10 it's not as best even when it comes to conscious content and i was hoping this is going to be better again i definitely admire it and i think it could bring some folks together if they're willing to listen and take the challenge there but again the challenge is all about getting people to agree on what is truth these days anyway and get some people to actually listen to each other and you know what for our sake down the road, I hope some of you do, but not sure this album's gonna get there. I like it, but this should be great, and it's really not. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Folks, I'm a Frank Turner fan. I really want to love this, but I'm even seeing a lot of his fans come down on this, and really, I think the intentions are very admirable. I respect that, and I think there's more going on. This record's gonna get some credit for it, but this should be better. Again, I think the music's what really lets this down. It's a little too polished for me. There needs to be a little bit more of that fire beneath it. But hey, if you want to buy it, link's down there below. And I got the poll up there, so all you diehard Frank Turner fans can tell me how wrong I am. Although, I haven't seen that many diehard Frank Turner fans being on board with this, which is very telling. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to get involved in my scheduling process, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. Want to see schedule? It's on my Instagram down there below. Keep in mind I've changed my regular schedule voting process and the Patreon contribution from per video to per month, so you can get more bang for your buck there. Beyond that, till next time. I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.